In this video, I'm gonna take you through a step-by-step -step beginner's guide of how to sell on eBay. If you're new to the channel, my name's Matt. I've been a full-time reseller selling on eBay for the last two and a half years. And I really would have appreciated a video just like the one that you're about to watch uh, when I first started because I really didn't know too much. I just fumbled my way through. But I can guarantee you after watching this video today, you're gonna to know exactly how to get started selling on eBay and you'll be making that first sale in no time. Some of the topics that we're gonna cover off in this video include how to create an account, the tools that you'll need to get started, what your first item to sell should be, uh, how to list that item up correctly, and then how to source items that you can sell as well, uh, how to ship those items out once they do go on to sell, and then I wanna look at some goals and expectations for your first month of selling on eBay, as well as some five must-dos that I believe after two and a half years will help you generate consistent sales. There's a lot to cover off in this video, guys. Grab a notepad, let's get started. It really only takes a couple of minutes to create an account. You just wanna to go to eBay's website, click on the register button in the top left-hand corner, put in your name, put in an email address that you'd like to use, and then create a password. From there, you'll have an account, and there's just a couple of things that you need to change. The first one is going up into the account settings tab that you can see here. Just click on that account settings and then you'll be directed to add your address details. So I'm just putting in my address and my phone number here. Now that that's done, we're gonna click on the payments tab and you're gonna to have to put in your credit card details so you can obviously get paid because that's the aim of the game, isn't it? So we're gonna put in my credit card details here and lodge that and make sure that is all ready to go. Uh, and then from there, I also like to just change my username to something that's a little bit better than the generic one they always give you. So that's it. You'll have your seller overview right there, ready to list up your first item, but just something to be aware of. You're only able to list 10 items when you first start to the value of $500. 10 listings and $500 worth of value doesn't really seem like a fast start to your eBay journey. And well, it isn't. That's eBay's intention. They just want to make sure that you're doing all the little things right to begin with and then they'll increase your level from there. You can actually get around it a little bit sooner if you wanna really get stuck into things just by contacting the eBay Customer Service Center and just letting them know that you've reached your seller limit and you're looking to add a few more items. And they generally unlock that capability for you and you can then start to add more items straight away. The next thing that we're gonna get into is the tools. So the pieces of equipment that you need to run an eBay business when you're first starting out. There's nothing too fancy to it, it is very basic, but these are the, some of the things you're gonna to need to sort out. It goes without saying, the two most important pieces of equipment are gonna be your mobile phone and your laptop. Now I do about 80% of my work on eBay off the mobile phone. So if you're gonna do that, I would definitely consider upgrading it to the latest device. Uh, I take my photos off my mobile phone as well. So it really is a two for one sort of a scenario and that's why I put all my money into getting a good mobile. Um, I'm, my, from a listing perspective, I've just got a really nice uh, trestle table that I picked up for free off Facebook Marketplace. So make sure you're really resourceful with the way that you're sourcing your items. Um, but this is for free. It's held me through for about two and a half years. I've got a white background. Uh, for photos, just the white wall behind me. And I've invested some money, about $130, into some box lights. And even as a beginner, I highly recommend that you guys consider getting some box lights. The link in the description below uh, gives you a good detail on the ones that I have. Um, you can buy through that link as well. Uh, so do consider it. I do think that it's really helped my, my listings and, and my photos and ultimately my sales uh, as a result of it. So definitely consider that. Uh, from a postage standpoint, I, I go to the local hardware store and I buy some bubble wrap and some butcher's paper. I source cardboard boxes for free uh, as well for my shipping. And then I've just got some basic stationery as well, like some table scales, some scissors, a tape measure, uh, a pen and some sticky tape. So from a postage standpoint, what you need is actually really quite minimal and you've probably already got most of the stuff. And then from an inventory standpoint, as you can see behind me here, I've got a lot of plastic tubs that I source from a local hardware store as well. They cost me $7 when you're first starting out. Maybe go and buy yourself about five tubs. Uh, it'll probably only cost you anywhere between $30 to $50, but that's what you can house your items in. Once you've listed them up, you can put them into the storage tub and then just file them away. And then when the item goes on to sell, uh, you, can, you, you know exactly where they are. So grab yourself some storage tubs if you can. They do come in handy. Uh, but that's pretty much everything. It really only can cost you maybe a couple of hundred dollars to have a full set up eBay business and you've got your mobile phone, you're ready to list up your first item. But the next step is what's that item gonna be? So we've set up our account. We are now ready to go from a listing standpoint, got all the equipment that we need. What are we actually gonna try and sell? The first thing that I recommend is to just have a look around your own home. That's exactly what I did when I first started out. And it's really a stress-free way to go about selling your first item because you don't need to put any money down 
to get some hopefully quality items that you've literally had lying around the house and not been using for quite some time. So I'm here at home. I'm going to jump into a few different cupboards, open up a few drawers, see what we can find and do some research to see how much these items are worth on eBay. Remember, we've only got 10 listings, so we want to make sure that these items are actually going to go on to sell for a decent amount of money. I definitely think one of the secrets to selling on eBay would be to sell items that you actually enjoy listing up and selling. You're gonna be doing this for quite a while and the last thing you wanna be doing is to be playing around with things that you just simply don't enjoy or personally get a kick out of. For me, when I'm outsourcing, I do a lot of DVDs, video games, I do a lot of hats and I do a lot of shoes and funnily enough, they are the items that I'm gonna take you through today. But really anything sells, everything's got a price on eBay and it's just a matter of just doing the research beforehand to see whether or not it's worthwhile. What I've got here is seven items, I'm going to save three up my sleeve to go out and do some sourcing later in the video, but I'll take you through these seven and I'll show you how much they're worth. All right, so the first one we're going to have a look at here is the brand new sealed DVDs. This is a crazy category. When I first got started into reselling, I had no idea that these would be actually worth quite a bit of money. These two right here are worth $20 each. So who knows, you might have some crazy DVDs lying around your own house that you didn't even know was worth some money and it could be a good category for you to get started in. Uh, look, sporting merchandise is another area that I focus on. This is a Zach Levine jersey. I'm sure you guys have got a lot of jerseys lying around your house if you're into sport. If you're not wearing them anymore or the kids have outgrown them, that could be a really good category for you to look into as well. The video game category has done very, very well for me, and it's an area that I'm starting to focus on a whole lot more. So I've got two wrestling games here that I know sell for $15 each, and I think that's a pretty good turnaround considering they were sitting in the cupboard and I was no longer playing them. And I've got some personal items here that I no longer wear and use. I've got this G-Shock watch as well. G-Shock watches, I could not believe the comps on this. This will sell for about $100. So if it was just a watch that I was never going to wear again, why not go ahead and sell it and make some quick money? And then also too, I've got this uh, McTavish surf hat as well. I love my hats. This one I don't think I'm going to wear, but this brand McTavish, when you search it up on eBay, it shows some pretty good comps. We should be able to get about $30 for that one. So... There's a couple of hundred dollars worth of value right here with these seven items. It's a pretty easy way to get underway. Now, you're probably thinking, how did you work out what those prices were? What did you do? Well, it was all through the eBay app. You can actually do a filtered sold search of the previously sold items of your particular item within the last 90 days. It's the perfect price guide to know how much you can expect to get for any particular item that you're looking to sell. So I just did a quick search on all of those seven items that I just showed you then. And as you saw in those comps, I know that I can list my items up for what they've previously sold for. Very simple step. Make sure you get the eBay app on your phone. And when we're out and about sourcing later in the video, I'll be using that feature to determine whether or not I should buy the item. The next step in the process is the listings. Now, I like to do it off my mobile phone. You can do it off the laptop. It's just easier to do it off the phone uh, because I, I take my photos there as well. Um, we're going to be doing a Law & Order DVD. I'm going to take you through the process. I'll put a bit of a screen grab up on the screen right here for you now. You want to be clicking on the listing, uh, list an item tab, and then from there, it'll say up the top there, tell us what you're selling. So that's where the title is very, very important. People will search for all of these keywords that you put into the title. So obviously the name of the TV show or movie that you're putting in for a DVD. Uh, so we'll say Law & Order, Special Victims, unit and we'll go season 15 and then I like to put the region in after that so region 4 I also like to make mention of condition so brand new sealed and free postage that pretty much covers all bases free post You've got a minimum of 80 or maximum of 80 characters that you can use. It'll then say that it's adding you into the category of DVDs and Blu-rays. We want to say yes, we'll continue with the match. Now the condition. The condition for this one is a brand new and sealed, so I'll be selecting brand new. And then from there you get your listing summary. And this is where I can now plug in a few photos and it's all done through the camera. So I'll just click on this little plus icon 
and that'll take me to the camera roll. Now with the cameras, uh, with the photos, you could be taking up to 12 photos. I highly recommend you get up to maybe eight to 12. I think that's the, the best way to go about it. It's a little bit harder with a DVD because there's not too many different angles that you can, you can take a photo of for a DVD. So I'm gonna try and get five shots here and you'll see here, we'll do one on the front, spin him over. Normally I'd pop the disc out, I'll take photos of the disc and the quality of that, but being a brand new, I won't bother with this. We'll do a bit of an angle shot there. I might just zoom in on regions. This one's got a few different regions, two, four, and five. So we'll do a close up on that. And then I'll do a side shot there as well. So, all right, that's five. Try and get as many photos as you can, but five is probably the bare, bare minimum. You try and want to get a minimum, maybe six if, if at worst case. Um, so all of our photos have now loaded up into the system. Then you want to go format, DVD. This is all the metadata that can help your listing get found. So you want to be making sure that you're putting all of these details in. There's a little bar down there that says recommended. You want to try and get that bar at a minimum to three quarters of the way full. Uh, so that's a little bit of a guide there for you. But we'll put in the movie title here, uh, Law and Order. Victims unit. And then the UPC is the barcode. There's a little barcode scan tab that you can click on there. Just blast the, the barcode on. Now the region code, let's work through some of this metadata. We want it to be a region four. You'll see that the bar has just slightly got a little bit closer to being fully charged. We'll go into type and we'll say it's a TV series. We'll say the rating is MA15 plus. We'll say the language is English. Now our bar is looking a whole lot more full as you can see there. So let's put in features and we'll go full screen. What does that get us to? So that, get us, that gets us to three quarters of the way full. I'm content with that, we'll continue on. So we click done and then from there, it's a matter of just setting our price. I leave the description per what the title is. If there was any other description that you would need to include, maybe a slightly surface, surface scratch disc or a hole in a piece of clothing, uh, you could put that into the description, but this one's fine. It pretty much is what it says in the title. In the pricing, uh, I'll change that to buy it now. Now, I personally like to use the buy it now for every single one of my listings. I don't do auctions. I find that you can just get a better price when you're doing a buy it now. You can set your own price and then you just wait for the buyer to confirm the purchase. And we know based on the past comps that this item here sells for 20 bucks. So we're gonna go into buy it now and we're gonna adjust the price to 19.95. So that one's there. Now offers, best offers is something that I highly recommend that you do for every single one of your listings. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just simply say, allow offers. So that one is now generate. So basically someone could say to me, do you want it? Can I buy it off you for $18? And then I get to decide whether or not to say yes or no. Um, so always do that because it'll get, actually a lot of my sales come from best offers. Um, that's really it. You can schedule a listing to start tomorrow, but we want this to go live now. So we'll say yes as it is. Uh, then the next is your delivery. So all of your shipping details. Now I in, in shipping like to select uh, the postage service that's there, the Australia Post standard two to six business days and then the postage cost, I do a free postage model. So I'm accounting for the postage charge in that $20, which is per what the comps were telling me. Um, so we'll go with the free post and then we'll do international postage it's not something as a beginner I think you guys should be worrying about, but we'll just do a standard international post for $20. Don't really stress too much about that for now until you're a little bit more skilled up in it. And then we'll do a local pickup as well. So that's pretty much everything from a postage standpoint. All of your preferences should be in there. You can manipulate your handling time. I've got it on a one business day. I recommend that you try and do as quick of a postage and handling time as you possibly can. Uh, so we'll run with one business day there and then sell it faster, we're gonna do that. So we're gonna go at 3% promoted listing. That means that there'll be more advertising for your listing per how much percentage you wanna be charging as a postage fee, or sorry, as a, as a fee for selling the item. So we'll say 3%, it's a typical thing that I like to do for all of my listings to try and get a few more views and a few more sales, and it definitely does work. And that's it, that's it. I don't know how long that took, just a couple of minutes, but um, we've been able to list up our Law & Order SVU uh, DVD for 20 bucks and we know that's how much it sells for it's now fully allocated in the right category at the right price I'm confident it's gonna go on to sell
So I'm pretty much going to do that process for the remaining six listings that I've got, and then I'll have my first seven of 10 listings ready to be sold on eBay. So you can get things underway in a really quick space of time. The next step is how to actually go out and source items. Now, this can be done in so many different ways. There's a video actually where I step through 10 different ways that you can source inventory for eBay, and I'm gonna leave that for you in the description below. So check that one out uh, once you've finished watching this video. But my three favorite ways of sourcing items, or I think the three easiest ways for you to get into it is first of all, one is to ask friends and family uh, if they have any items that they no longer wish to sell. It's kind of like the additional way of being able to source around your own house, just go and pick everybody else's house. Um, that's a perfect way to do it. And don't be afraid to tell people that you're trying to sell on eBay as well, because that's where a lot of your inventory will come from. People just simply knowing what you're doing. Um, so that's the, the first way or the next way after having a look around your own house. Uh, but then the fun ones, the, the really treasure, this is the large aspect to why so many people love selling on eBay. It's the treasure hunting aspect of sourcing inventory. Now you've got your flea markets, you've got your garage sales, and you've got my favorite, which is the thrift stores. And that's what we're gonna do in this video today. We're gonna go out to our local op shops here in Australia, our local thrift stores, and we're gonna try and find items at a really low price. We wanna make sure it's as low as possible, or at least enough margin for us to be able to make some profit. Um, so we're gonna jump in there now. I'll take you through a few of our finds, and I'm gonna show you what I expect to get for them from a profit perspective. Let's do it. Another app that I use while I'm out sourcing is called eProfit, and it gives you a good breakdown of what the profit is that you can expect after eBay fees and postage is taken out. I had a look at the DVDs, and we've got this one here, Girls, the final season. It's only $2, and it sells for $15 on eBay, which is a $6 profit. These video games are also a very similar result, two into $15, again, another $6 worth of profit. And these Nikes, they were $15, and they should sell for about 60, which means we can net about 28 profit there. So here's the numbers for what we're able to just pick up. There were two video games, a DVD, and a pair of shoes. All up, that sells for $105 on eBay per the comps that we were seeing. And because I used the eProfit calculator, I was able to realize that there was gonna be a $48 profit based on the fact that I was buying them in store for $21. I think a really good gauge on what to look for when you're using both the eBay app and the eProfit app to determine whether or not you should purchase an item is to try and find a double your money scenario. So investing $21, if that was a minimum of $21 profit after fees and postage is taken out, which obviously eProfit does for you, uh, I would go ahead and confirm the purchase of the item. But there's so many items out there in thrift stores that you really want to cherry pick the best of the bunch. And especially as a new seller, you want to be making sure you're getting desirable items. So you want to actually see when you're doing that filtered sold search, that there's a bunch of those listings that have gone on to sell. That's a good indicator that likelihood is yours will sell as well. So that's a really simple, quick and easy process of how to go into a thrift store and find items to sell for a profit. You can do this at flea markets, you can do it at garage sales. And as long as you've got those two apps, eBay and eProfit, you're never gonna make a bad buy. The next step of the process is the shipping and handling time. Now, I integrate my eBay business with the Australia Post My Business Plan, and ultimately what that allows me to do is just have an automatic import of all of my sales, and then from there I can freely go through and just select which label I would like to have printed out. You don't need to go to the post office with this setup. It is so quick and easy to do, and the labels literally print out for you at home. Now, I'll go ahead and I'll use satchels, envelopes, and boxes. They're pretty much the three things that you're gonna need. I've got a box here from Bunnings Warehouse that I'm gonna to use to put my McTavish hat in. That one there literally just protects the brim of the hat. I put that into the box. I'll put some butcher's paper around it and I'll print that label out here from home. Something like a DVD or a video game that we had, they'll go into an envelope. Now I use the Australian Post tracked envelopes, which is these ones right here. And I've got a little tracking number there for the buyer to be able to know where the item is on delivery. You pay a little bit more for it, but I do like the peace of mind of it. And then the final one that I buy is these satchels. You can get small, medium, large, and I believe even an extra large uh, from Australia Post. And I buy these in bulk to save a little bit of money as well. The other benefit with the Australia Post My Business Plan is there is discount per the number of sales that you do within a monthly period. So the more you sell, the more discount that you're gonna get working yourself up to a band five level discount. So if you're here in Australia selling, check out the Australia Post My Business Plan. It is quick, easy, and I think the best way to go about your shipping. I think one of the coolest things about having this eBay business was that I actually turned the camera on day one and I documented every single step of the journey. And I definitely fumbled my way through. There were a lot of mistakes. I didn't do things correctly. I bought the wrong items. I tried to sell them for too much money. I bought them for the wrong price. But hopefully that video today has got a few different hints and tips in there that I personally didn't have when I started 
that I really wish I knew. I think the main point of that is I really want to give you guys a bit of an expectation of what your first month on eBay will look like. There won't be a lot of sales. You're a newbie and the algorithm doesn't know you yet. You need to put yourself out there and be listing up as many items as you possibly can. If you've got a desirable item at the right price, no matter what it is, it will sell as long as it's desirable and a lot, as long as a lot of people want it. So I would expect you guys to try and focus, or what I would say is a good goal for your first month, is to try and focus on listings. Have a listing goal. Try and get 100 items into your eBay store. Keep calling them up and saying, I'm trying to put as many listings in as I can. So try and get that as your target. The sales will come as a result of that. Don't be concerned if the sales don't come in straight away. Picture a store like Walmart. If Walmart only had one item in their store, you can't imagine they're gonna be getting too much traction. But if they've got a full store and they've got multiple stores, they're gonna be turning over stock every single second. So it's just a matter of building up your store, building up that shop front to allow the sales to come through. That would be my expectation for you in the first month. Just work on getting your first 100 listings. All right, so say you make it through the first month. You've got your first 100 listings and a couple of sales have started to come through as a result. Well, there's five slightly advanced tips that I wanted to mention here, and I really do think they're gonna help you increase your sales and get regular sales starting to come through once you're set up. The first one, well, and the second one, we spoke about it when we were going through the listing, best offers and promoted listings. Those two features, if you aren't doing them, you're significantly costing yourself the opportunity to make sales. It actually generates on an annual basis, 50% of my sales are either promoted or best offer. Now we spoke about that before, please make sure that you're doing it because it is a huge, huge percentage of sales for myself anyway. The other one as well is that it's really important to focus on customer service. If you get a question come through from a buyer about a particular item, maybe you haven't mentioned it completely in the description, go ahead and shoot that response back as soon as possible. The algorithm can notice whether or not you're actually sending and communicating messages with your interested buyers. And if you are, the algorithm's gonna keep feeding you because that's what they wanna see. They wanna see good customer service and they'll reward you with that by more impressions and more page, page views of your listing. So make sure you're doing that. And the other one as well that I've got here for you is a same day or a one day shipping and handling time. It's a, again, another really good thing for the algorithm to keep the algorithm in your favor. If they can see that you're shipping out your items, the minute they sell, you're gonna keep gonna get sales as a result of just simply that alone. Forget about listing up new items. I get, I get sales come through just because I ship out my items on time when I say I will. The last thing you wanna do is to get it into any uh, deep bad water by not shipping out your items as soon as possible, or at least per what you've set the standard to be. So I make it a same day or a one day shipping and handling, and that's always uh, in its best favor for me to keep getting sales. So make sure it's as quick as possible. And then the last one as well, it's a bit of an advanced step, this one. I don't recommend that you do it within your first couple of months, but international shipping. There are so many more buyers globally than just within your own country. So if you can enable and learn the process of sending out international parcels, I highly recommend that you do that. About 10% of my sales come from that. And when you're trying to build a full-time business like I have here, I need to rely on every single avenue for sales that I could possibly find. And international sales gives me that extra 10% that I need to make this thing a full-time gig. So there's five steps there, guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. I spoke a little bit earlier on in this video about 10 different ways to source items for your eBay business. I'm gonna leave that video with you right here as well. So go and check that one out. Hopefully you've learned a thing or two. Happy selling. We'll see you soon.